شما خوب خزیان مغرب انا ایوان رومینا جونز شنتیتون اخورز دوینگ بزنس ان امریکا و دیو اخورز دیلا نایا ایل بازت زرستت خا فیلم بشمت دی اکس اف اپاسل ثادیس ا فیلم پیش الکتیو به خاکت ها امریکای بشمت سیون مسک قد قمت پروگرام داور بیوت پی قوخ سبب اتلن ارخ امریکای اخورز دو دخل به لیشانت انگلیس و آی لایک تو ویلکم هیز گریس مار اوا رویل بیشپ اف کالیفرنیا استرین چرچ اف دی ایست اند مستر استیون مسک هو از دی اوتر اف دی اکس اف اپاسل ثادیس Welcome to our program. Thank you, Ramina. It's good to be here again. Thanks for coming back again. Um, I would like to ask you a few questions. Um, would you tell us who was Mar Ede and what is his significance to Assyrian Christian history? Mm -hmm. Well, first and foremost, I'd like to greet all of the viewers of A and B. Shnamet Marana Mofan Parjana Khabibe. It's a pleasure for me to be here. The the importance of uh, one of the 72 apostles of Christ who is Saint Thaddeus, or in our own language, in the Syrian tongue, we refer to him as Mar Adde Shlicha, Saint Adde the Apostle, is he is one of the founding apostles sent by Saint Thomas, um, one of the 12 disciples of Jesus, three years after the resurrection. So around the year 36 or so, he was sent by uh, St. Thomas to the city of Edessa, or Urhe, which was called by the Greeks Osroene. And that was the, uh, the remnant of what was once the great Assyrian Empire. Of course, it fell in the, in the Roman part of, of, of the world at the time, but it was a buffer state, a small uh, city-state, a small kingdom that acted as a buffer between the Roman Empire and the Persian Empire. And so that's where the origins of the missionary activity of St. Thaddeus or Mar Adde took place after leaving Jerusalem. And what is the anaphora of Mar Adde and Mar Mari? Mm -hmm. Well, the missionary activity of the apostles, uh, especially Mar Adde or St. Thaddeus, was not, simp was not only in the spreading of the gospel from going from Jerusalem to Edessa to Urhe, but he also brought with him the prayers of the church in Jerusalem, the prayers of the early apostles of Christ. And one of those prayers is what you have referred to, the anaphora of Saint Adde and Saint Mari. And the word anaphora, of course, means Eucharistic prayer. In our own Assyrian tongue or in the Aramaic language, it would be Qudasha. And that is the prayer by which in the church the bread and wine are changed into the body and blood of Christ. But the anaphora of Mar Adde and Mar Mari, St. Thaddeus and St. Mari coming in from Jerusalem is today the oldest uh, Eucharistic prayer, the oldest anaphora, which is in use in Christendom by any Christian church. And that is a fact that's attested to by scholars and by church fathers and whatnot. So that is really the gem of the Assyrian Church of the East because it comes from Christ, from his apostles, from the Holy Land to Edessa. And of course, it spread to other parts of the East from there. Now, who was King Abgar? Okay. Well, in speaking about St. Thaddeus, you really can't uh, give a complete picture without mentioning King Abgar, mm -hmm. who we refer to as Malkia Augyar Ukama, King Abgar the Black, or King Abgar Ukama, who during uh, the early... Uh, early part of the first century of the Christian era, he was the king of the city-state of Edessa, the kingdom of Edessa, during the time of Christ when he was preaching in Jerusalem. And King Abgar had heard, according to the tradition and according to the acts of uh, Thaddeus, which I'm sure Stephen will speak about more as a, as a literary genre, as, as a book, um, he had heard of the miracles which Christ performed in Jerusalem, and he himself had an illness. They think it was a gout, and at the time that was known as the illness of kings. So he sent uh, an emissary to a mission to go to Jerusalem to meet Christ, and he sent with them a letter that he had written uh, inviting Christ to heal his illness. 
And the letter, of course, uh, is recorded in the ecclesiastical history of Eusebius of Caesarea in the early 4th century and by other testimonies who have actually seen the letters. And he invited Christ to come to heal him, to come to Edessa. And he mentions that he had heard that the preaching and the gospel of Christ was not being received and that he was not being believed on by the inhabitants of the Holy Land. So he invited Christ to come over and to receive up to half of his kingdom in Edessa. And he sent that letter with his emissaries to Jerusalem and the emissaries reach Christ while the Lord was still preaching. And according to some historical evidences, we think it was the third year of Christ's, uh, his, during his uh, public ministry. So the last year before Christ was crucified. And of course, Jesus receives the, the mission that has come from King Abgar, and he responds to the letter of the king. Uh, one of the emissaries of King Abgar takes down the words of Jesus, where he gives a blessing to Abgar and to his kingdom. And he says that he must fulfill the mission which the Father has given him. But after he has ascended into heaven, he would send one of his disciples to come and heal King Abgar. And that's what happened when St. Thaddeus was sent by St. Thomas around the year 36, or three years after the resurrection. That's interesting. <laughs> and. Uh... Now, uh, what is the significance of the city of Edessa to the history of Assyrian Church of the East? I think we covered that. Right, that uh, surely. Well, Edessa, uh, which is, of course, the Greek form in, in, in our own language, it would be Urhei. And the word, or, or it's, it's a bi, uh, bipartite or, or a dual uh, name. The, the prefix Ur is an ancient Akkadian uh, word which means city. And we see that in the Bible in many ancient place names in the Old Testament. And the second part, Hai, where we say Ur Hai, means, means the living one. So when translate or put together would be the city of the living one, referring to Christ, because Christ had blessed the city through the letter that he sent uh, to King Abgar, and also the image of Christ, which I forgot to mention this, that the mission that had come from King Abgar one of the emissaries had, uh, had painted the face of Christ, which Jesus blessed, and they took that back, and that uh, was a relic that was cherished in the city of Edessa for many, many centuries. So that's why it was known as the city of the living one, because they had the letter from Jesus and the holy image of the face of Christ, which was kept in the royal compartments um, in the city of Edessa. So that is the beginning of the apostolic evangelization, the apostolic mission, of what we know as the Assyrian Church of the East. And the apostles, of course, spread from Edessa after the death of Thaddeus. His, his own disciple, Marmari, reached the city of Seleucia Stesiphon, which was the capital of the Persian Empire around the year 80 AD. And he began to establish churches, and he established a, a see there of the patriarchate of the Assyrian Church of the East. And that mission also spread further north into uh, Arbil, which was known as Adia Bene at the time. And there was a, another mission there. So, so from Edessa, the church spread further east in, into the depths of the Persian Empire. Now, where would be Edessa now, as far as geography? Edessa nowadays is in southeast Turkey, and it is known as Urfa. It's referred to as Urfa. OK, great. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, Stephen. Uh, would you please uh, tell us about yourself and what motivated you to make this film? Okay, well, first, um, several years ago, I mean, back in 91, I was doing some research. I like to study the Bible and church history, and I, uh, I read some things about the Aramaic language, and it talked about, at the end of the, this briefing about the Aramaic language, it's talking about the Assyrian people and how Aramaic is still spoken to this day, and it's talking about the Syriac language. So through this, I found the story of the Assyrian Church of the East, found it very fascinating, so I started doing a lot of research in it. Especially, what, one thing that really amazed me was how the church spread to China, to India, Mongolia. So I wrote some papers that are published in the Journal of Assyrian Academic Studies talking about these, these communities established by the Church of the East, which is really fascinating. During the Middle Ages, they had churches in China, the Church of the East did in China, and in India, Mongolia, as large, largest 
Christian community in the world. And of course, through uh, uh, disasters, the church declined. So I thought that was very fascinating. And it's overlooked. Usually when church history is, is taught, it's taught from a, a Eurocentric. I mean, there's reasons for that. But I think it's unfortunate that, that the contributions of the Syrian church are, are usually left out. So I started doing a lot of research. And I actually went in 2001. I was in uh, Syria. I went to Aramaic-speaking villages around Damascus, the, the village of Malula. And I went to Hasaki, and I visited several Assyrian communities uh, over there. And of course, while I was there in Damascus, 9-11 occurred, and I was, I'm still in the military. So uh, about a year later, I got deployed <laughs> to, to Iraq, and I served in Iraq as a, as a soldier, as a sergeant. And uh, later on, I felt the Lord move me to become a chaplain. So I went to Iraq again. The first time I was in Iraq was 2003 and 4. I went back 2009 and 10 as a chaplain to minister to the spiritual needs of our troops. And during both deployments, I worked with uh, Assyrian Americans who uh, were employed by the, the government as translators. So there's, you know, it's, it's good to, you know, while I was there to work with. Uh, Full circle. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> in fact, the odd thing was I, I ran into the same people I met before 2003 and 4. It's like, uh, yeah. How did you meet Morav? Um, I think he, I wrote a book about uh, Mar Maradi, actually, uh, and I think he, he came across my book. I, f I found him on, uh, I got a lot of Assyrian friends, and somehow uh, on Facebook I found Mar Awa. And With social uh, media, it's easy to find one yes, another nowadays. And he, I liked his, he likes to put uh, artwork, the Assyrian artwork, icons, and I liked his artwork, and sometimes I'd share it, and finally we got into communication. Uh, I guess he heard about the movie project that I was working on. That's what we need to talk about uh, next. So how did, I, how did I get involved in the movie project? What happened was last, uh, last May, somebody contacted me. They, one of the papers I wrote, I wrote three papers on the Church of the East. One was uh, Martoma about the, uh, uh, the Assyrian Church of the East in India and the story about its apostolic founding by, by Thomas. So somebody found this article and said, well, this would make a great movie. And I was like, you know, it really would. <laughs> you know, because that's, this past year they made a lot of faith-based movies uh, and biblical movies. And they're making a lot of movies about India, like Life of Pi and other films. I said, well, this, this fits three genres that uh, Hollywood's making right now. So I wrote the script up. But uh, it didn't really work out with this producer. But through a friend, I, he had a, a friend of a friend makes movies uh, in, in you know, lower budget films, mostly westerns. And uh, when I was doing the Thomas project, I, I included the whole story of, of Thaddeus in there. And I was thinking one way to promote the, the, the Thomas project would just have a, a short film on Thaddeus. And then I was like, well, to make a movie about Thaddeus, we don't have to film in India. We could just film it you know, here in, in this set, we, which we'll talk about later. So it's like, we can do the story of Thaddeus and a lower budget. And I think it's important to tell the story now because we can create awareness who the Assyrian people are. The, the Assyrian community needs to know their own story uh, about, you know, Edessa and, and uh, Mar Adai and, and King Abgar. But we can also reach out to the, the non-Assyrian world, as it, as it were. And I think this is particularly important because the Assyrian culture is under serious threat right now. And, and perhaps by creating awareness, uh, we can maybe p people find out who the Assyrians are, and uh, perhaps we can motivate people to actually help the Assyrians in their, their hour of need when we see this threat by ISIS and the, the unspeakable horrors going on over there. Yes. Now, uh, when you wrote the script, uh, Marava also part uh, reviewed it, edited, I believe it well, was uh, collaborated. Took a, <laughs> took a look at it, actually. Your script was based on your book, though. It's based uh, on. This is. It's, uh, it's based on the doctrine of Adai, right. uh, mostly. Uh, so yeah, I wrote the script, and I, you know, I let him all the suggestions that he has. Yes, Mara, <laughs> you know, I'll do it. Whatever you say, because I, I want to tell the story because I think it's important. But I, I want this to be an ecumenical film, you know, uh, the different Christian faiths, because we're all united in the apostles for one thing. Uh, but I want to honor and show great respect to the story and, you know, and do an all, all reverence to the traditions of the Assyrian Church of the East. So that's one of my motivations. So uh, the sources of the script is the Bible, of course, because I tell the story how he became a disciple of Jesus Christ. But also the, it's called the Doctrine of Adai, uh, which was very ancient read, uh, writing. If now, I can just say it in our language, it's the Malpanut at Mar'ad Deishlicha which is a 4th century, 5th century document that, in terms of the Church of the East, is very important for 
that early history of the apostles. Like Mar always said, there's a church historian writing around the year 325, almost immediately after Constantine stopped the persecutions. Uh, he went to, he writes in his book, he knew Aramaic, he knew the Syriac language. So he went to Edessa, he went through the archives, and I guess he was skeptical, but he looked on the letter from Abgar with his own eyes and he translated himself. And he puts this in, it's called the, uh, the, the Ecclesiastical History of Eusebius. It's the first complete book of church history. And it's got the story of the Assyrians right in there. So I took it from that. But later on, the Assyrians said, okay, what, what Eusebius did was nice, but let's tell the story our own way. So in, in the Syriac Aramaic language, they wrote the, uh, the doctrine of Adai. But there are other sources. There's a Spanish woman. She may have been a nun. She may have just been like an adventurous uh, named Agraria, I Egeria. think. Agraria. She, Egeria. Uh, about, I don't know, 75 years or so after Eusebius, she went there and she also saw, uh, she saw a statue of King Abgar. They said, this is the king, this is King Abgar. She saw the letter itself and they told her about, uh, uh, not just, not that, that Thaddeus was there, which he was. They mentioned Thaddeus was there, but they said also Thomas went. And of course that's in uh, the script that Thomas on his way to India went through Edessa as well. So these are based on the, the ancient accounts. Egeria writes in her book, it's called The Pilgrimage, and she, referring to what uh, Stephen was saying, she actually saw the image of Christ, which was brought back from Jerusalem, and the letters, that the exchange of letters, and she narrates how the Bishop of Edessa had taken her around, and they actually used to have uh, relics and souvenirs for pilgrims who would go to Edessa, which were copies of the letters between Jesus and Abgar that were copied and they were given to pilgrims and whatnot. So I think they, they brought out the, uh, the original edition. <laughs> so did you get one? I, no, they I'm stopped making them a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately when it fell into Muslim hands. Yeah, yeah they probably uh, destroyed everything. They, they did indeed, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so we have the records from Eusebius and of course, in the, the Aramaic form is just it's translated uh, uh, or just transferred verbatim into the doctrine of Adai, but the original manuscripts, unfortunately, were lost through the persecutions. Well, what I really enjoy is the collaboration between Americans and Assyrians making this movie together. And I think it will give some publicity to Assyrians among the Americans. And also it, uh, it teaches, uh, I personally didn't know much about the, uh, the apostle and now I have learned so much. <laughs> It, it's a, totally educational for us as well, kind of having an appreciation for our own culture and our religion even more. If you read Stephen's book, you'll learn a lot more. Yeah, I should read it. <laughs> it narrates the whole history. But it's very important, Ramina, you're, you're very right. It's very important for our younger generations to know and to appreciate and to hold on to our history, the history of our church. Uh, the subtitle of the movie, and I'm sure we'll get into it, is the beginnings or the birth of Christianity among the Assyrians, mm -hmm. of Assyrian Christianity. So these are things that are easily forgotten by the, the younger generations because we're so much into technology and social media and our uh, smartphones and everything. And, and so the, the, the younger ones are forgetting where, where they've come from, where their parents and grandparents and you know, where their tradition has come from. And, and, and appreciate it. So we put the, we have a movie out there, they can download it and watch it on their iPhone. <laughs> so that, yeah, this is bringing the ancient stories into the modern world. Yeah. So the movie is going to be filmed in? We're going to film it in Texas. Texas. There is a set, it's a movie set, uh, that was actually, it was originally built by John Wayne for the Alamo movie in 1959, but there's a whole area that, that looks like a biblical uh, area. Mm -hmm. I think it's supposed to be a Mexican village, but it's a large set and we can dress it up to make it to Jerusalem and to Edessa. So I've, I've seen, I haven't been there myself, but the director and producer uh, have gone there and they filmed several movies there, so they're very familiar with the set. And based on the recent video footage and photographs I've, I've seen, I think it's ideal uh, for us to be able to shoot there. And, and who's going to play the role of the king? Okay, the king, uh, we're going to have an Assyrian-American uh, in that role. Oh, but okay. Billy Haydu, you know, Billy Haydu is a film producer. He's made several movies in Assyrian. I think he's made three movies. And uh, he's just shown them in... in yeah, very successful, too. Yes, so he's, he's going to be a producer in this film. And uh, I think he has somebody lined up for King Abgar, but I'm not... Uh, we have to raise the funding for the film. That's where everything's lined up. Once we get the the the, the, the financing, we need one hundred and twenty thousand dollars, and then we'll shoot the film. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you know, once once we once we get the money, then you know Billy's going to call these actors and get them and get fill the roles. But what I want, 
I, I'm glad to have Billy Haydu and his friend Vincent Shade and uh, Martin Koshaba. Mm -hmm. They're going to be our Assyrian production team. I'm, I'm very happy to have them involved. Uh, but my goal is to have an Assyrian production team, and I want to fill six roles uh, as Assyrian Americans uh, in those roles. And of course, um, this the Chuck Walker is the director, and Sam Cable. They've they've made several movies, and they have all kinds of actors. So uh, we'll use their a lot of their actors, but for a lot of the important roles, I want to designate them specifically for Assyrians. And who's this? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I wanted to ask if you could say something about the main actor. Saint Thaddeus. Saint Thaddeus. Saint Thaddeus will be portrayed by uh, Lorenzo Lamas. Right now we can uh, show, I guess, our first video clip mm -hmm. where uh, uh, Lorenzo Lamas is going to talk about his excitement for the project. Okay, so. sounds good. So we're going to go watch the, we're going to show the first video about uh, Lorenzo Lamas. Right. Hello, I'm Chuck Walker. I'm the writer, director of Walker Cable Productions, kind of the uh, creative head. You know, we've done a lot of movies in the last 25 years in a lot of genres, uh, action adventure, westerns, uh, family films, horror films, intrigue, suspense, drama, romance, you name it. But we're especially excited about the acts of the Apostle Thaddeus. We anticipate that the movie will be shot at the historic Alamo Village. Of course, that's the set built by John Wayne for the historic movie The Alamo. It might seem kind of like an odd choice for a biblical epic, <laughs> but actually the adobe infrastructure and architecture is exactly perfect for what we need for this movie. Hello, my name is Stephen Missick. I'm the screenwriter for the movie project we're working on, The Acts of the Apostle Thaddeus. This tells the story of Thaddeus, one of the twelve apostles of Jesus Christ. It's based on the writings of the early church fathers, and I think this is a very unique story and that's never been told before on film. It's also particularly relevant because it tells the story of the Assyrian people, and now we see the, people, the Assyrian people in danger because of the rise of ISIS and their persecution of Christians. We're also very excited to have a good friend play the title role in this movie, Lorenzo Lamas as Thaddeus. I am Lorenzo Lamas, and uh, I'm thrilled to be working on uh, Thaddeus, uh, the new uh, Walker Cable production. Uh, these are are terrific guys and a, a wonderful uh, production company that I've had the pleasure of working with many, many times in the past. Um, so if you have an opportunity to invest in a uh, Walker Cable production, um, don't hesitate. You will not regret it. So I'm excited about um, being a part of this Christian uh, movie. Uh, I think it's an important time uh, for our society to uh, to embrace the uh, Christian faith. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. We're excited about your interest and your involvement in our project, and we hope to see you on the set. Lorenzo Lamas, uh, he's the son of Fernando Lamas, who was a big mover and shaker and actor in uh, Hollywood in, the, I guess, the 50s and 60s and 70s. And this is his son. And uh, Lorenzo has had a very successful career in movies and in television. He was uh, played a major role in Greece with John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. And uh, he's in several TV series. He's in uh, soap operas. But his big claim to fame was in the 90s, he was in a very successful television show called The Renegade, where he played a, uh, a cop turned like bounty hunter type right. thing. Very, very successful. That was the, probably the high point of his career. Uh, he, he is in the television version. There's a, a Mel Gibson movie called Air America. And he played, a, a, I guess, the same role in a television series by the same name. Uh, so he's been, and he, now he's on Celebrity Apprentice, and he just, his uh, autobiography just came out last month. And uh, he, his father raised him, you know, in, in the church, uh, some type of Protestant church, but uh, if you, you saw the video, 
I was kind of surprised that he said this. He says, you know, I think that I'm happy to make a Christian movie, and America needs, at this time in our nation's history, we need the Christian faith. And it's like, well, amen, Lorenzo Lamas. He had his wild youth, but now he's really turned uh, again to traditional uh, values and that moral structure that was instilled in him by his father. Uh, what about location? You said the location will be uh, in Texas. Yeah. And we have a video on that one as well, right? right? Well, let's, you can watch the video, and you know, we'll see the video, and you'll see. Uh, uh, if you look at the video, you'll see that this is a nice location. Uh, it's historic. It's been used not just for uh, not just for the Alamo movie, but other series like the Lonesome Dove series. All kinds of westerns were, were filmed there. So this is a location that was built specifically as a movie set. And uh, I saw the documentary, The Making of the Alamo, and like these interiors, they made these sets. Instead of filming in a studio, they made it where they could film these interiors on the set. So it was specifically built. Uh, for filming movies on. So it's going to work really good for us. And you just watch the video yourself and you can see that uh, this is a good set that looks really like Bible lands. Uh, what about costume? You have a costume designer. Yes, well, I have acquired several costumes. This is kind of very interesting, but recently there was the Dwayne Johnson Hercules movie. Yeah. And I went on eBay and they're getting rid of a lot of their costumes from that film. And I bought them at a low Oh, you bought them? <laughs> yeah, I bought them at low low prices. Uh, you know. It, so I got sc uh, screen used film uh, costumes yeah. from Hercules, from the TV series Rome, um, uh, Spartacus, the TV series. So yeah, I got a lot of screen used costumes. I mean, these are good costumes or quality and used in movies before. And we have a young woman named Tia, and she has a lot of experience uh, in doing costume design for theater. And she's going to su supplement uh, the costumes we have by making her own, so that we have plenty of, of uh, period costumes for the movie. Hello, I'm Stephen Andrew Missick. I'm the screenwriter for this upcoming movie project we're working on, The Acts of the Apostle Thaddeus. And uh, while we're developing this film, there's several Im important things for making a good film. One is location, and we have an excellent location, Alamo Village. But another thing is costumes. And I think it's important that we have good, realistic, authentic costumes. So I've been able to acquire screen-used costumes from various movies, from the uh, HBO's Rome, from the, was it, Stars? Uh, uh, Spartacus and several costumes from the recent Dwayne Johnson Hercules movie that uh, these are screen used costumes that we're going to use in our film but we have to supplement that and so we have here our costume maker and designer Tia tell us about yourself Tia hi my name is Tia Louie and I am the costume designer for this uh, upcoming project about Thaddeus and I've had a little experience designing costumes just in high school shows. Tell us what you've done before. I've done uh, the 1920 show Thoroughly Modern Millie. Uh, it's a musical. And I've also had experience with the works of Euripides with Trojan women. So you've done something that's set in the ancient past before. Um, so how long have you been doing uh, this, working as a seamstress and making uh, costumes and I've, wardrobe? I've been sewing uh, since fourth grade, actually. But I just recently started designing in uh, ninth grade, I think. So you've designed your own wardrobe and costumes and dresses, but you also make several too, right? Yes. So, yeah, we'll see some of the, the work you've done before. So what do you feel about doing actually a movie, a biblical movie? It's really exciting for me, especially since I'm only in high school. It's a great opportunity, and I'm really excited to be a so part of it. You might get to dress Lorenzo Lamas, who's <laughs> going to be playing our lead as as uh, the Apostle Thaddeus. So, so I've been trying to. We're going to get some material so you can look and research the period and and do it. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So this is uh, Tia. She's going to be working on our costumes <laughs> and our wardrobe. It's good to have her as part of our team. Perfect. And so we have the, uh, and who, who's going to play the role of Queen? Linda, Linda George, the famous, internationally famous uh, Syrian singer. And I've heard of her. I, I met, uh, was it Juliana? 
I met her before. I never met uh, Linda George. I'll meet her on the set. But I have heard of her, and I've listened to her music. And uh, she does secular music, but she's always done Christian and church music throughout her career. So obviously, she's a you know committed member of the Church of the East, and she's very. Up she she worships through uh, her her music, and she's a very beautiful singer. And she's going to play the role of the queen, uh, the wife of King Abgar. So now we've got the king, we've got the queen, we've got St. Thaddeus, we've got location, we've got costume design. What do we need? We need $120,000 so we can... <laughs> I think that was the punchline of, of the... Right, right. Everything's ready to go once we, once we raise this money. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be shooting. So uh, I know the church is behind the film, and, and it's really important for this film to be... Well, the church is in principle, I've, uh, as the diocesan bishop here in California, I've uh, written a letter of endorsement for the project. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, in theory, the church as a whole, of course, supports it because it's the, uh, you know, it's narrating the history of the Assyrian Church of the East. And, you know, it's not just the history of the Assyrian Church of the East. Really, it's the, the history of the Assyrian people, mm -hmm. the beginnings of Christianity in Assyria, or what what was the rem remnants of ancient Assyria. And I think that should touch the heart and the feelings and the sentiments and the emotions of everyone who is uh, Assyrian, who's a true Assyrian. And uh, I think it ought to move them to not just donate money. It's not just about the donation, but really to want to be a part of this project. Mm -hmm. uh, a donation is, is, a, is a, a way that they can do that, is a way that our people can do that. And I, would like to strongly urge our Assyrian people to help this project in any way they can. And the good work that people such as Stephen are doing, who, though not an Assyrian by ethnic background, but who appreciates the Assyrians and their history and their Christian history. And I think that's very precious. That's, that's something that's priceless. Now, can we have a, the church can have a, a budget or a project uh, or a fund or an account where people can donate to the church in support of the movie and then well because the movie is not being produced by the church per se uh, I would urge all of our viewers to to donate directly to the project and I think Stephen maybe you should speak about how, how or where those donations can go to okay you well, have that information more than I would yes <laughs> Uh, I have a blog called Aramaic Herald where I talk about uh, like biblical studies in the Aramaic language, the history of the Church of the East. I, I put a lot of information about the crisis uh, with ISIS and how people could help. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I made sure that was on the on the blog. But now the blog is focusing on the making of this movie, and there are ways they could give. Uh, uh, they could send. I, I have uh, Saint Thaddeus Productions LLC, and they could send a check. Uh, just P.O. Box 882, Shepherd, Texas, 77371. But uh, Billy Haydu is also collecting funds for the movie. And uh, if you go to the, the, the blog, you can see the, the way you can get a hold of Benny, Billy Haydu uh, and, and send funds to him if they feel more comfortable doing that. But they could just send it to me and uh, put it in the account. And once we have the money, you know, it's all going into the film. Actually, AMB is definitely uh, supportive of this movie. We've been interviewing various different, we interviewed you several times and interviewed Billy Haydu, and uh, we'll be interviewing uh, Linda George and of course Morava is here to support the film. So we're behind the film and we really want to make it happen. Now we just have to come up with the funding, which I don't think hundred, what, twenty-five thousand? $120,000. That's, that's it peanuts. For a movie, a that's, that's it should not, should not be a problem. And the important thing to remember, Romina, is that this is the first film that Stephen is um, preparing and the one on St. Thomas which I'm also looking forward to which also is a part of the Assyrian Church of the East history and a part of uh, a number of other Christians, ancient Christians who are known as the Christians of St. Thomas, mm -hmm. the Christians of southern India. This will be of great importance for them as well so it's far-reaching it's you know the, the with, with the Christians important. with the Christians in southern India, the St. Thomas Christians, they were part of the Church of the East until the Portuguese came in and kind of severed that relationship, unfortunately. So 1499. And, and then, however, we have uh, Mar Opram. Uh, George Mokum is his original name before he became Mar a... Metropolitan Mar Opram, right. Yeah, he's uh, uh, in Trichur, in India. There's a huge uh, 
huge St. Thomas community, which reconnected with the Church of the East. So there's a large, substantial uh, St. Thomas Assyrian Christian community in India. And of course, if we make this movie, obviously we'll be able to springboard off of that and to do Thomas. And it's, it's Thomas and Thaddeus are the founders of the Assyrian Church of the East. So it's like one continuous story. Uh, as a last question, actually addressed to Marava, is if we can explain to our people why uh, the question, people keep asking me actually when I try to promote the film, that uh, well we have Syrians in Iraq and Syria, they're struggling and they need money. Why should we invest money in a film where we can send it to Iraq or Syria? So if you would elaborate on that. Sure. Well, Romina, I think it's, uh, it's a legitimate question. Uh, to ask that, especially because the need in, in Iraq and Syria and other parts where our Assyrian Christians are, and other Christians of, that, that speak our language, are present and undergoing the many sufferings that we all are aware of. Um, you know, Christ said that the, the poor will always be among you. And this has been a part of our nations and our, our church's history for the past many decades, if not centuries. So this is something, this is a reality that we live with. And many organizations, beginning with the church and, and other organizations, are doing their best to help. The need is very great. I was speaking with um, a few p people in the Assyrian community who are working on the more um, national end of, of things. And you know, they, some estimates have come in, some numbers that say that the, the need is about $9 a day per head and multiply that by, by 120, 150,000 people, that's a huge sum. But to make a film and to support a film like the one on the history of St. Thaddeus and the beginnings of Christianity in Assyria, Assyria is important in order to let the Western world know what is the history of these people in the Middle East who are suffering. You know, something that Stephen mentioned at the beginning of the interview was that the, the, the outlook on Christianity and, and the, the manuals of church history and what we hear in the news is very Eurocentric. You know, it's, it seems as if Christianity is a European, a Western religion. Well, it's not. And that's something that we as Assyrians, as Christians who are living in the diaspora, you know, the countries outside of our homeland, need to educate and to make aware uh, to the greater public, to all of, you know, all of our Western non-Assyrian friends that, look, these people, this is their history. You know, Christianity is 2,000 years old. It comes from the apostles of Christ. So the, our communities that are suffering in the Middle East have been suffering since time immemorial, since the time of Christ. So it's mostly to bring that awareness out to the West. And that's important because when you have large churches, large humanitarian organizations, charitable organizations, which see a film like the Acts of Thaddeus and, and, and see that, no, Christianity among the Assyrians and among the Christians that speak this language in the Middle East is as old as Christ and the apostles themselves, then they come to realize really what the, the role of the West is in order to help our people out in the Middle East. And I'm not speaking politically, but humanitarianly, charitably, in terms of many needs that our people have. You know, this will bring about awareness, and that's very important. And I think this is the calling, this is the vocation of ourselves as Assyrians living in the diaspora. This is a very important um, uh, enterprise that we really need to engage in. And uh, also, I'm a doctoral student. Um, I've attended seminary. To be a chaplain, you have to have a master's degree in theology. So I got my master's degree at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, but now I want to get a doctorate in ministry. I'm going to a school called Houston Graduate School of Theology. And my doctoral project, which will be like a thesis, is about engaging the evangelical churches to give aid to Assyrian Christians who are suffering the refugee crisis. So my doctoral project is going to do what I can to get the American Christians to help the Assyrian people out now. So hopefully within the next year and a half, I'll be launching that project. So I'm doing what I can too. God I'm making the movie. Stephen, that's, that's wonderful. That's, that's just beautiful. 
and the project's been it's been approved. And I just wrote the just last week I turned in the pros proposal for it. They they approved the uh, the outline, so I think this is going to go forward. Yeah, well, thank you very much for your efforts. Well, just pray that God would bless it, and I'll be be effective. And when it's all over, I'll be Doctor Missick. <laughs> we'll call you Doctor. <laughs> that means we're going to have more work to do. By the way. <laughs> Well, Robert, thank you very much for being Thank you for having me, Romina. It was this. a pleasure being with you and, and Stephen. And again, I'd like to reiterate uh, to all of our Assyrian friends and, and viewers to please help this movie in any way they can, particularly in a financial way, because that's what uh, this movie needs in order to get on its feet. And I'm sure that uh, many good fruits will come about because of it. Um, to bring about awareness, as I mentioned, uh, to Western, to European churches and organizations and peoples. That's what we need to do, we who are in the, in the diaspora. In conclusion, I think that this will really help the Assyrian community in, in, in various levels. One, it'll, like Mar was saying, it'll create awareness of, to, the, to the Western world, who the Assyrian people are, and having a recognized actor you know, in the role of Thaddeus, because he's got big name recognition. But it's going to give Billy Haydu and uh, Vincent Shade and, and Martin Kushaba the opportunity to produce this film, and these Assyrian American actors. So this is really an opportunity uh, to give them the opportunity to work with uh, Lorenzo Lamas, and so they can learn. This could be launching Assyrian's career to, to better the, the the whole community. Uh, so it's, it's, I think it's giving them opportunity to get the word out about the Assyrians, but also maybe these these Assyrians will be able to, to start a, a career in filmmaking. So I think it's a great opportunity, and if people feel led to give this project. Also, it's educational, it's cu cultural, it's ecumenical, and it's evangelistic. It's about the message of Jesus Christ. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The message of love, compassion, forgiveness taught by Jesus is the theme of this movie. So if you feel led to give, P.O. Box 882 Shepherd, Texas 77371. I'm sure the address is going to be on the screen somewhere. Yes, we're going to yeah. put that on the screen. Well, Stephen, thank you very much for coming here. Next time I'll see you, I'll probably will call you Dr. Messick. <laughs> <laughs> and good luck with the film. Thank you. Khazan Mughabi, Tlihi Vikad Mughabalo, Khuna program, Mbasmalo Khun support with Ola Afilma, Vimun Amman, Ka Khurze Khine. Pushum Shana.